When we do a groom for visual effects, animation, or for a commercial, we're always going to have some sort of ref reference and uh, concept art, which we have to recreate in 3D. So I picked this image as our main reference, and I would like to do some annotations to see what the details are, which we will have to get into our groom. So let's start on the face. You can see a nice curvy flow here. When I paint that in here, the hair is coming from the top of the nose and then building like that flow down the nose. It's going further down here. Then it creates a nice curve up here before it comes um, a little bit down this area and follows more the outer surface of the head. So let me paint some more lines in here to get this. Here we got one and then want to get this here. Here it comes from the top going down here. So we can always already see this, this flow here in that direction from the nose to the other side. Here in the corner of the mouth, we have some curly direction. Here it's pointing downwards a little bit and coming from that side where it in the front starts to point forward. So we have some direction change in there. Here it comes from the top and then meets on this corner. And here on the bottom part, don't need to paint too much. It's, it's just coming from the lips and going down. All right, um, let's check out the neck. We see some, some um, like big clump here. The hair is coming from the side, going down here um, and meeting in the middle here. So I just paint in some big lines so we can see the overall direction we want to have. Um, here it's coming from here and then it's going down here a little bit. If I paint the neck here, our hair is not pointing just outwards, like away from the body. Instead, like it, it builds this, this li uh, uh, mane like a lion, like that clump below. And we want to have that um, recreated later on. So we have, um, here we see some nice uh, wavy um, structure. And here it comes down here. All right, I think that's good enough for the neck. Um, let's see on the eyebrows and the eyes. Um, the hair underneath the eye seems to start here from the eyes and then go down here. And here it starts going to the outer side and then meet here in the middle to that um, edge here to that tip. And on the eyebrows, it comes from here and goes down here and then meets in that pointy area. And on the top of the eye, on the eyebrows, we have that flow where it comes here And then from here, it goes to the outer side of the head. And on the forehead, it goes from the inside, like from that one line here, in one direction here and in the other direction on the other side of the head. Oops. So like this here, here we can see it nicely. Um, here it flows upside, meets here. Um, here we got a breakup, like it goes inside here it seems, and then it goes up this area. Um, yeah, this, this area here is, is always a little bit tricky one. You have to play around there, laying out your, your guides correctly so you can get some nice flow. All right, let's, let me paint in here something more. So we got this flow here and here. 
All right, that's good for the head and for the main body here. Um, let's look at another key detail, it's the ear. Uh, we can see here that we got a really fluffy ear and the whole ear is, is, is standing out in the groom. So that's something we have to focus on. Um, you can see that the hair goes to the outside of the ear. Like here, it's coming from down here. Um, here it starts going down and then flows into our actual fur on the head. Here in this area, it comes from the center and goes to the front. And here it starts going up again. Then we have like some nice curly clumps in here going to the outside. Here. Right, so I think we, we have like the overall flow on the ear. Those are a little bit short, maybe. That's fine. Um, that's like uh, the overall flow we want to have in our groom from uh, what we see in the reference. Now let's go to the next detail, uh, which stands out. Um, that is those lines here. Those lines are called parting lines. That means uh, the fur starts flowing in different directions, like it points into one side of the line and on the other side of the line it points to the to the different to the other side like here it goes this direction and here it goes this direction and we have that line going through here and here is another line so let's just paint in some of the parting lines we see like this one is a little bit off then here on the ear we see another parting line and we had some here on front. Yeah, so that's the main, de main detail we have to get into in there, especially because the tip color is starting so abrupt here. Like we have um, a dark color from the root towards the tips, and then we have like really bright tips, which make those parting lines even more visible. Um, let me get another color and Check out another key detail, it's the flyaway hairs. So when we check out the silhouette here on the side or like also on the top here, we can see that there is a lot of, of hair um, standing out and breaking up the silhouette. And that's the so-called flyaway hair, which is just um, the main hair with a different direction flow, uh, diff not flow, with, with uh, a randomized direction and, and just standing out and going in different directions. You can check that out in a second on a, another reference. <coughs> Let's check out the clumping. Um, when we start on the neck, we can see a lot of, of uh, curly, frizzy hair and clumps here. Let me delete what we did so far and paint in some clumps here. So we got one here, then we got another bigger one here. There is one. Here is one, there is also another one. So we can see that we got quite some big clumps here. And on the side here, we can see uh, a lot of small clumps or medium sized clumps, which are tighter and got more um, pointy tips like those here. So we can already see that there are different sorts and variations of clumps. And what we want to try to do is uh, we will set up um, layers of clumping. So we have um, the first layer, which are big clumps. And within those big clumps, we will create medium clumps. And then the medium clumps again uh, will contain small clumps. Talking about small clumps, when you look at the face, we have like all those um, super tight and, and small clumps here, which you might see, which almost feel like lines here. And then they go, they become bigger here and create some bigger clumps, which are quite randomized on the tips. Like we don't have like here, if you check this out, or like here, we see like those small clumps 
creating a little bit bigger clump and making that more of a randomized structure instead of uh, the comparison here with the super tight um, tips. The appearance of the clumps is always like how the fur is, if, if it's wet or if it's super dry fur. Like here on the neck, it seems it's like dry fur and that's why it's becoming curly. And here it seems to be a little bit wet, which is why we have those um, tight tips here on the clumps. All right, um, one last detail is those viscous here and the guard hairs. Guard hairs are just um, thicker, longer hairs which stand out and which build the, um, the most upper part of uh, um, a fur. Like the fur consists normally as three, uh, from three layers. You've got the, the under fur and the main fur and then you've got guard, guard hair. And also we got like those whiskers here, those longer hair and those guard hairs. So that's another detail we will want to get into our, our groom. Let's um, delete this and go to the next reference we have. That's a close up where you can see the flyaway. So here you can nicely see the flyaway hairs which means you got more or less a clump and then you got certain hairs which just go in a different direction and randomize the whole uh, structure and break up our clumps and, and um, her hair flow. Then again here we got something like, like whiskers. So we see that they are also visible uh, on the eyebrows and the eyes and we will want to get those in our groom. For the eyes, we see again here that the hair starts flowing from the top, uh, from the bottom lid towards or down to the downside. And then it meets here on the side with uh, the eyebrows. So it's, it's not flowing like from here, just up in, in the direction to the corner, but actually from the lower eyelid down the face. Okay, let's delete this and go to our last reference for the body. <coughs> Sorry. So for the body, you can see that the parting lines are not only visible on the neck, but also on the body itself. We might not make them that prominent here in this area, but we for sure want to have uh, some parting lines on our legs or, or on the body. And Let's see what we can do in this area. <coughs> About the hair flow, we can see that um, on the upper part of the body, here on the front side, the hair stands out and then slowly starts following the body and, and flowing downwards. The same here for the back, like the hair stands out here and then like it starts pointing downwards and flowing downwards and from the legs here. So here it goes up, then it changes direction slowly and starts going down. Um, a nice detail we see here on the leg is that the fur on the front part of the leg is standing out here again um, slightly, then it starts changing direction downwards and then um, it flows backwards and points to the back. So it does not flow uh, from top to bottom, but actually points towards the back. You can see the same here. So the hair stands out to the front, then here probably changes direction again to the back. Um, all right, that's all we need to know for our references. Let's get started in Houdini. <coughs> 